السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح حي على الفلاح الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يحده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمد عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا تقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون Amma ba'd, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this ayat, He commanded us, He, com- he called out to the believers, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, O you who believe, O you who believe in Allah, that He is absolutely one without part, without partner, without equal, without likeness. O you who believe in the angels who obey Allah and are not, created with the capacity to disobey Allah. O you who believe in the divinely revealed books, the seal, the finality of them, which was the Qur'an. O you who believe in the prophets and messengers sent for the guidance of mankind from their Lord. The seal of prophethood being the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of creation. O you who believe in the last day and the standing before your Lord being reckoned for the choices that you make in this life. O you who believe that absolutely nothing happens, whether you like it or not, whether it's sweet or bitter, nothing happens except by the will of Allah. Those who believe this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is addressing you directly. اِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ حَقَّ تُقَاتِهِ Have taqwa of Him as you, as it is His right that you have taqwa of Him. Taqwa being that you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala publicly and privately, inwardly and outwardly, whether you are with a group of believers or alone in the dark uh, recesses of your own room or amongst the disbelievers, it doesn't matter, you obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But knowing that we would not be able to fulfill this as it is His right that we fulfill it, he gave us a dispensation when he said, فَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ مَسْتَتَعْتُمْ Have taqwa of Allah as much as you are able to do so. As much as you are able to do so. Right? And we do this, we obey Him inwardly and outwardly in order to protect ourselves from His displeasure. وَلَا تَمُتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ And do not die except in a state of surrender and submission to your Lord. And the only way to fulfill this command is that you live in the state of surrender and submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so we begin Jum'ah with this ayat week after week in order to remind us of this guidance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And despite what is often found 
in the circumstances today where people will take Yawmul Jum'ah as a dars, as a lesson, as a place of learning. Yawmul Jum'ah, according to what my teachers have taught me, is not a place for lessons. It is a place for reminders. It's a place for calling the people back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, calling us back to what we already know, inviting us to act upon what we know we should be acting upon, calling to taqwa, reminding of the glad tidings, reminding of the warnings, and enjoining good and forbidding evil. And this is also the example of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, where he would stand before the companions on Yawm al-Jum'ah, and he would correct them by saying, why is it that some of you, right? why is it that some of you, and then he would give the corrective measure. And the aim here was not to teach them something new. It was oftentimes to remind them of what they should already be doing. Of course, there were people there that learned, people who had not heard this before, and so they were learning and taking benefit. And then there were those who had heard it before, and so it served as a reminder. And then there were those who were involved in whatever deed it was that he was correcting them from. And he addressed them indirectly so that they could save face. So they could correct themselves on their own terms. But so that he could remind them what they were supposed to be doing. The Prophet ﷺ, he was a warner and he was a bearer of glad tidings. He was Bashirun wa Nadirun. And two, he was a purifier. He was sent by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to purify the people's hearts and their characters and their behaviors and in reality the entire culture that they found themselves in. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam called his people to tawheed. He called them back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And in response to this calling, in response to this calling, <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> they had different reactions, and from an, from amongst the initial reactions was their offer to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam that he would make them a king from amongst them. They would give him power. They would give him authority, and they offered to give him wealth to make him the richest from amongst them. And he, they offered to him the most beautiful women, any woman that he chose. And the Prophet ﷺ displaying that this was not about this world. This was not about the, the joys and, and, and whims and desires of this world, the passions of this world. He told them, if you were to put the sun in my right hand and the moon in my left, I would never abandon this call. And so they tried a different tactic. They invited him, they sought compromise, they wanted to make a deal with him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said to him, look, this year we will worship your God. And then next year you can worship our God. And what we can do is alternate each year. One year we will take your God, the next year you will take ours. One year we will take your way of life, the next year you will take our way of life. And they said, if in this way we find that your way is better, we find benefit in what you're doing, at least we can take our portion of it. At least we can have a share in it. We can take what's good from it. And if you find that what we have is good or better, or there's benefit, then at least you will have your portion of the benefit as well. And it was in this context it was in this context that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When the disbelievers came and they offered to make this compromise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَا أَعْبُدُ مَا تَعْبُدُونَ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدُ وَلَا أَنَا بِدُمْ مَا أَبَعْتُمْ وَلَا أَنْتُمْ عَابِدُونَ مَا أَعْبُدُ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دِينَ Right? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O you, say uh, F1, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to say to them, right? Qul. This is the first word, it's a command to say this, not just to live it, not just to hold it within yourself, not just to feel it in your own heart, 
but actually to communicate this message to other people. Eh? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, cool, say this. Oh, you. This word kafir, right? Alhamdulillah. Oh, you ingrate to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh, you who you know that Allah sent guidance for your life and instead you'll cover over it with something else. Oh, you who would show ingratitude to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you don't think that it carries this meaning of ingrate or ungratefulness, then no, did not Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say, فَذْكُرُونِي أَذْكُرُكُمْ وَشْكُرُونِي وَلَا تَكْفِرُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Remember me and I will remember you. Be grateful to me. وَلَا تَكْفِرُونَ Don't be ungrateful. Right? And so here we see the true meaning of the kafir, this word kafir. It's not as they define it, infidel. Even though you know we can argue about that. What it really means is someone who is ungrateful for the bounty of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They're ingrates to their Lord. And they cover over the darkness. They cover, oh, Afran, they, Afwan, they cover over the light of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They cover over the, the light of the fitrah. Their primordial nature in their hearts that they know la ilaha illallah. They cover over this with the darkness of their whims and desires. They cover over it with their own wants and fears. These are a people who they prefer what they found others upon. Over the guidance that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them, sent for them to live their lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Say to them, O oh, you ingrates to your Lord, I do not worship that which you worship. And they worshipped a myriad of idols in that day. And we today, we could say, well, these people that we find ourselves amongst, even some of the Muslims, don't worship idols. Right? But rather today, they worship materialism. They worship the things of this world. And their, their aqidah is dogmatic scientism. If you can't touch it, taste it, smell it, it must not be real. Right? While Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us a different worldview and a different measure. We don't worship that which they worship. We don't worship money. We don't worship phones. We don't worship cars. We don't worship relationships. We don't worship anything of this dunya. We don't worship any form of idol, that which we make ourselves or that which is made by others. But rather, we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. We do not worship that which you worship and you don't worship what we worship. And we worship the one true God, the primary cause of all causes, the nourisher, the sustainer, the sovereign, the lawgiver, the loving and compassionate, the kind and the merciful creator of all things who is absolutely one, without part, without partner, without equal, without likeness. There is no duality, there is no trinity, and there is no plural. He is absolutely Ahad, He is the one. He is as somad He is the one who has no need, and yet all creation is in need of Him. Lam yalid wa lam yulad. He was not begotten, nor does He beget. I know that I reversed that. Labas, mashallah. ahad. And there is nothing like Him. We forget these things. We say it, we recite it all the time, but we forget the meaning. Because we stray from these things when we forget that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-ahad. He is the one from which everything comes and everything points back to. That He is as somad Ya ayuhal nas, antumul fuqara ilallah. Antumul fuqara ilallah. You are impoverished before your Lord. Wahul ghaniul hamid. And He is self-sustaining, worthy of all praise. We forget these things. But this is the Lord that we worship and they do not worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And we will never compromise. We will never worship that which they worship. And they do not worship that which we worship. And how can it be otherwise when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Allah wali alladheena amanu yukhrijuhum min adhulumati ila nur. وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا أَوْلِيَاءَهُمْ التَّوَغُوتِ يُخْرِجُونَهُمْ مِنَ النُورِ إِلَى دُولَمَاتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that Allah is the protective friend of the believers. And He moves the believers from the myriad of darknesses, the myriad of ignorance, the myriad of folly to the one true light. 
While those who disbelieve, those who are ungrateful to their Lord, their talgut, their false deities, their fa- false idols, that those that they would rather obey and follow over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, they lead them from the one true light into a diversity of darkness and ignorance. And so ultimately, at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes a clear demarcation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear. There is only the darkness of man's inclination or the light of the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for us as Muslims, we cling to lakum deenukum wa deen. To you be your way of life and to me be mine. And this surah again was revealed to guide us to remind us, to make firm in our hearts that there is no compromise. There is either falsehood or clear guidance. And the choice is ours whether or not we choose to be who we claim that we are when we say that we are Muslims. Do we choose to submit and surrender to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Or do we choose other than that? أَقُولُ قَوْلَ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرَ اللَّهِ لِي وَلَكُمْ Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala ashraf al-mursaneen Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Amma ba'ad, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed for us Laqam deenukum wa liya deen To you is your way of life and to me is mine And again I want to say that these are Jum'ah is a reminder for the people And <coughs> Before I continue, I want to say that, you know, this, this is a beautiful community, alhamdulillah, and the growth that has come since the last time I visited is amazing, mashallah. And I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala continues to, to strengthen this community and, and bless this community. Ameen. And so when I say what I'm saying, right, it's only a reminder for us all. Just like we know, all of us know that whoever imitates a people is from them. Right? No one needs to stand up here and, and beat the sin. We know this. Right? And we know the narration of the Prophet ﷺ, that indeed actions are but by intentions and every person will have that which they intend. So if a person is intending to seek and, and, and draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, then that's what they'll find inshaAllah ta'ala. But if a person compromises because they want something of this dunya, then that's what they're going to find. Some minuscule piece of this dunya that will leave them when they leave it. This weekend, alhamdulillah, everything that I said leads up to this point, inshallah. And again, it's all by by way of reminder. This weekend, many Muslims will be traveling, taking advantage of the time off, going and visiting friends in different lands, maybe even in the same community, inshallah. And there's benefit to that. There's good in that. We should visit one another. And we should sit together with our families and our friends. Suhbah is one of the best ways to purify our hearts. Alhamdulillah. But we have to ask ourselves, what is our intention? And when we share a meal with our families, then we have to ask ourselves, what is the intention behind this meal? Know that if an animal is slaughtered the same exact way that we slaughter our animals, but it is done with the intention of it being for a Hindu idol or a Buddhist idol or something like that, it's haram. Not because of the animal, not because of the way that it was slaughtered, but because the intention behind it. And so a person can have a turkey, somebody can have, you know, sweet potatoes or whatever a person might have, right? They may have whatever they have that's halal. But if the intention behind it is haram, the food becomes haram, right? So we have to ask ourselves, when we take that plate of food, what is the intention behind it? Perhaps it is that some people will exchange gifts this weekend. And they will say... This is from the sunnah, brother. Isn't it from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ to give gifts and receive gifts and reciprocate gifts? 
It's from the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. But sometimes we forget that the Prophet ﷺ refused gifts from people under certain circumstances. There was someone who gave a gift to the Prophet ﷺ expecting something better because the, the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is to give the gift, reciprocate with better than you received. Right? If they give you something small, you give them something bigger. That's the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And so someone gave a gift to the Prophet ﷺ, and then when he gave them something that they looked down upon, they scoffed. And the Prophet ﷺ realized that they were giving it so that they could receive something of this dunya. And what's more is that there were people who would try to influence the Prophet ﷺ through the giving of gifts, as people do with leaders. And so the Prophet himself ﷺ limited who he would accept gifts from. Because it's not the act. It's never the act. You can justify giving gifts, receiving gifts, reciprocating gifts, all you want. But what is the intention behind it? Indeed, actions are but by intentions. And some Muslims, not the people here, but some Muslims, they'll say, Milad Isa alayhi salam, that we're observing this just like some Muslims say, Milad al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that we are observing the celebration of the birth of Isa alayhi salam. And I say to you, how do we celebrate Milad al Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Whether you, whether you say it's bid'ah or you don't say it's bid'ah, I'm not getting into that. What I'm saying is, how is it observed? It's observed by the recitation of poetry, by the reading of the seerah. By going over the sunnah, by talking about the character traits of the Prophet, the shama'il of the Prophet ﷺ. Is that how the Muslims are doing Milad al-Nabi? Or are they following the Christians? And we know the answer. And so this claim, Milad al-Isa, it doesn't stand. What songs are you going to sing about Isa alayhi salam? What songs are you going to sing? And so, alhamdulillah, we have to know, and, and for that matter, we don't even know what month the Prophet, so the Prophet Isa alayhi salam was born in. Some of the Christians actually celebrate Christmas next month. That's a whole other matter. I'm not here to talk about that. What we, what we can say is that this celebration that is taking place this weekend in these lands, it is a pagan holiday. It's based upon the winter solstice. It's based upon the celebration in Europe of Yule, a winter celebration. And the reason it crept into Christianity is because the Romans synthesized religions in order to keep down conflict, in order to spread peace. They synthesized religions, they compromised. This is a known fact and no one can deny it. So I ask, are we doing the same thing? Are there Muslims? And there are, but not here. Are there Muslims who have trees in their home? And they decorate the trees and they decorate their homes like the disbelievers do. Let's ask ourselves a simple question. What is the intention behind that? What is the intention? What could possibly be the intention of following the disbelievers in these practices? Oh brother, it's just culture. It's just the social custom. You have to understand. I think I understand pretty well. I was raised here. I entered into Islam. I understand pretty well. Alhamdulillah. But I also understand that order, custom, culture is considered in the Sharia as long as it doesn't contradict it. And what contradicts this deen more than shirk? The celebration of the birth of the Son of God. No, no, we're not saying He's the Son of God. We're just celebrating the birth of a Prophet And Where did you get it from? Where did it come from? Right? The Sharia rejects whatever contradicts the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from the firmest... Of the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Kulhu Allahu Ahad, Allahu Samad. Lam Yalid, Walam Yulad, Walam Yakulahu Kufuan Ahad. Know that fisk, transgression, is when someone trespasses the guidance of Allah, when they trespass the Sharia. When the person does that, they are seen as a wrongdoer, a sinner, a transgressor. Right? But when a person justifies it and they try to speak as though it is from this deen. Right? That's when it becomes an innovation. And every innovation is a going astray. And every going astray leads to the fire of hell. And so we have to continue in this community and in our families and in our neighboring communities and with our friends. 
We have to be people who call them back to Lakum Dinukum Waliyadin. To us is our way and to them is theirs. And when we come upon a people, whether believers or not, when we come upon a people who are engaged in frivolity, in falsehood, then we separate from them kiramen with dignity and honor. So let us not forget who we are. Let us not falter in our deen. Let us not miss opportunities to be a source of guidance for others. Let us not become a source of misguidance for other people. And let us never compromise in our deen. Let us be true to the claim of who we are, that we are people who surrender and submit to the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع مجيب دعوات اللهم اغفر لأمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم ارحم أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم فرج عن أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم أصلح أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم اللهم واجعلنا من أمة محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم آمين إن أستق الحديث كتاب الله وخير هدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشير الأمور محتثاتها وقل محتثة بلا وقل بدة ضلالة وقل ضلالة في النار وأقيم الصلاة. الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله